Tuesday, December 3rd, 2013. This is the Sales Playbook Podcast. I am your host, Paul Casting from YourSalesPlaybook.com, and this is the podcast for sales reps, sales leaders, and business owners who want to sell more. Now, this week, we're going to be talking about something, a little something I like to call 10 Obvious Things That We Fail to Do. Now, let me just kind of set this up for you. I mean, when I say 10 obvious things, I don't mean just like 10 things that like you're tripping over. It's right there in front of you. It's obvious, right? That like, like there it is. I mean, things that not only are so obvious, but like we love to tell the world, hey, that sells 101. That's obvious. Like, duh. Like, things like we, we just like, like, why would you even do a podcast on this? Well, because many times we, we just kind of fail to do what we know. So there's going to be 10 things here, just like the, the title implies. Some of them we're going to whip right through. Others, I think they're going to deserve a little bit of a little bit of Uncle Paul beating them up a little bit. So you guys know how I like to roll. I think we need to get right down to business. I don't like spending 10 minutes of a podcast telling you what I'm going to be telling you. I think we got to get business. So the very first item on this list, this list of 10 obvious things that we, we fail to do. The very first one is asking for referrals. Now, I mean, I'm like, like this would be the first time you ever heard that one, right? We should be asking for referrals. Well, you know, it's funny because many times in my coaching practice, when, when I first take on a client, especially, we're sitting there, we're kind of analyzing what they're doing, what they're not doing, what could be done better. You know, you know the deal, right? And I'll ask the question, are you asking for referrals? And so many people who just blow you away, how many people are just not asked for referrals? And we could go on and on as to why people aren't asking for referrals and, and I'll give you just a couple of quick reasons I mean I th- well actually I'll just give you one reason that I think it just falls under I think we're waiting for some some mega grand biblical event to occur that like entitles us to the right to ask for a referral and I think that could be a big part of the mistake here and I also think a lot of people don't know how really to ask for a referral so you kind of like maybe maybe we could put it under the category one part of it like awkward for some people and and maybe not feeling like they've they've done enough to warrant uh the right to ask for a referral and then just simply not knowing how so uh i'm going to give you one bit of advice something like just start asking for referrals right and stop waiting for this grand biblical event for the heavens to open up and say you may now ask for a referral you know one cool thing that you can do is um Ask for a referral the way that you would. Again, I don't want to give you a script, but I do want to give you one bit of advice that serve, that serves me very, very well, and it, and it served my clients uh, very, very well, is you have to help people with categories of people to think about when they're kind of like running through their brain of people they may know who could use your so what you want to do is again ask for the referral in the way that you would but then what you want to do is give the other party three groups of people to think about now again there's a lot a lot of like ideas running around their brain lots of people that they come in contact in business what we're doing now is we're trying to organize their thinking into groups because that's how we categorize things in the brain so what you want to do is give them kind of three groups of people to think about to kind of jog their memory right to kind of cue the memory that they can kind of rattle off a few things and Plus, by the way, when you're asking for three, uh, you have a higher probability of getting more than one. So that's something right there. You don't want to just ask for one. You want to ask for it three groups of people. So what you're going to do is ask for the referral the way you would. And let's just say maybe I'm talking to John and I ask him for a referral. What I'm going to do then at the end of it, I'm going to say perhaps you might know of someone that might be someone in your your LinkedIn network, someone, maybe a vendor or vendors that you're doing business with that could use my services, maybe a golfing buddy. So things like that, especially if you know the golf, it's very, very helpful. But think of three groups of people and help them to process and to kind of run a search in their brain by offering those three groups of people. 
So that's the first one. The second thing I think is like almost joined at the hip with referrals. And the second thing I believe that we fail to ask for are testimonials, particularly asking for them before we need them. Many people wait until they absolutely need the referral, they, they uh, referral, I'm sorry, the testimonials. Um, I, I think a few things that you might want to think about. When you have someone that is loving what you're doing for them, and especially you just, just kind of bailed them out of something, you did that proverbial 11th hour miracle and they're thanking you and telling you you rock and made them look like a rock star that would be an awesome time to ask for a testimonial and what what I do and again this is my approach you guys know I like to use humor especially when something is awkward for you consider using humor and kind of, you know, even in some cases, if you can put yourself as kind of, you know, the butt of the joke or um, in, in, in other cases, just being extremely humble, almost in a funny type of way, it could really help ease the awkwardness of the situation and just make it more uh, actionable. So what I might do when it comes to a testimonial, somebody tells me, for example, hey, Castain, uh, I just want to let you know, um, I, I, I can't even begin to thank you, you know, with, with this coaching relationship, this, this, and this has happened, and by the way, I, I ranked fifth now uh, for the third month in a row. Now, I'm not going to let that go. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say, do me a favor, please, right now, like right now while you're talking with me. Grab your smartphone or jump on your computer if that's easier. Email me what you just said to me. Just It could just be two sentences and here's why. And I'm actually saying this to them. And here's why. Because I want to get more cool clients like you. I need more awesome people like you. I And you could fill in the blank. I need more people that are going to be like loving what I'm doing and appreciate the services that we bring to the party. But right there in that moment, you want to do that. And what you want to do is, again, because you know how the world is right now. Everybody's kind of in this ADD thing, man. It's the next bright, shiny object. We're chasing it. And in that moment, guess what? You're the bright, shiny object. So why don't you just leverage the moment? Start leveraging these moments when somebody tells you that you pulled through with this 11th hour miracle and they say something really cool to you say hey stop what you're doing right now could you please just email me what you just said and boom you have that testimonial now these testimonials I mean I, I think I'm gonna have to do a podcast just on these because they're very very important to you as a sales professional and you should know that by now I mean first of all you kind of build these up before you need them it's a very good time than rather than being uh, under the gun and what I recommend that you do is just there's a lot of different ways you can use them I mean I use them I have them all over my website by the way on various pages on the hire Paul page I have it on the sales school program page different products and services that I have my sales training page I mean I have them all over the place it's very very important that if you're able to put it on a website but you might be thinking but Paul I work for another company how can I possibly you know put that uh, on, on a website well another thing you could do if you have a LinkedIn profile maybe you could put a few like testimonials and just put the quote up there in kind of the summary that's that that's right there on your LinkedIn profile that's another place for it hey you know what why even stop there I mean we don't have to just put it on a website or put it up on our LinkedIn page um, obviously if you're a job hunter I mean you know if you're looking for an opportunity right now a resume could be a, a good place for it but here's the other thing that you can do I mean if you use proposals as part of uh, your presentation where you would generate a proposal and have everything kind of you know documented out what you're going to be doing and costs and price and all that kind of fun stuff could you have a page there that kind of puts some testimonials right there front and center. I do it in mine, by the way. I mean, I always include, obviously, a bio page. And even, you might say, yeah, well, Paul, you do public speaking, and, and you're trying to be Mr. Personality with your business and all that kind of stuff. Um, I could see it for you, but for me, well, we kind of forget sometimes that people are buying us kind of first if you really think about us and if, if you buy into that theory that people do business with people they know they like and they trust 
Well, this is part of that process, and it's it's certainly going to help you. So I would highly recommend that maybe you put the testimonials there. And if maybe, again, this is like a real tough crowd right now that I'm dealing with today with you guys. Maybe you say, Paul, none of the above. Well, could you, would, would it hurt for you to maybe create perhaps a bio sheet and put some testimonials there? And maybe at some point in the getting to know you phase of a relationship when people are looking across that table, should I do business with this person? Maybe you include that as a leave behind. They're going to want to get to know you better and kind of guide them through that bio sheet of different places where you hang out, where they can watch you kind of anonymously and safely and from a distance. Yes, things like your LinkedIn profile and some other places and all, but you can certainly include those testimonials. So I think it's very, very important. And last but not least, I just want to tell you, um, I've owned my business now for two and a half years. And I was when I was doing the preparation for this week's podcast, uh, I was just thinking about how many people I do business with where I'm, I'm the buyer, where I'm buying for my business, and how many people have asked me for testimonials, including, by the way, I mean, salespeople that I do. I'm dealing with salespeople, not just business owners and stuff. Not one person has ever said, hey, Castain, you know, could you put that in writing? And these people have done, like, incredible favors for me. I just had somebody the other day, and again, I don't want to get into specifics. I don't want the person to feel bad now. But just, I mean, just really bailed me out of something with a with a time frame where I kind of, you know, you know the deal, folks, right? Like, kind of like I slept on something, and all of a sudden I'm like, oh, my God, I have this deadline. Like, I got to get this done, like, yesterday. The person came through, and I said, Dude, you, you kick ass, man. You really made me look good. Thank you. You saved me on this one. No testimonial. Nothing. Nobody asked. So if you, I mean, think back to that old saying, man. If you don't ask, you don't get. And you got to start asking. Let's lose all this shyness BS and just ask people stuff, man. I mean, you're not asking them like some personal question or something. I mean, you're asking for a testimonial. So enough said there. The other thing, I, I almost want to write this on a sheet of paper. Put it face down and say, give me to the count of 30 to get to my car and get the hell out of here before you read what it is, because you're just going to want to kill me for this. It's just so damn obvious, but like nobody does this one. I mean, I've been talking about this one for years, and I'm talking about right now on item number three, sending thank yous. You know you're supposed to do it. You don't wake up in the morning and say, I know. I'm not going to thank people. I know I'm, I'm not going to demonstrate good manners. I know I'm just going to demonstrate poor business etiquette. It doesn't work that way. I know that you have great intentions, but you forget. Not only that, but even those of you who are doing the thank yous as, as you're supposed to be doing, you might be missing opportunities to say thank you uh, in addition to what you're doing. So let's just kind of run through a little laundry list. You have a meeting with a prospect. I think you should say thank you. And I know there's some hardcore people out there that think you shouldn't thank them. Like it kind of somehow puts you in a weaker position that that you're thanking them and they should be thanking you because it was your time as well. Um, you know, I, I don't know. If you want to play those games, go for it. Um, I can tell you that for 30 years I've been thanking people and I, I really, I, I, I cannot think of a single instance and God knows how many meetings in 30 years where this put me now in a weaker position with someone else. I mean, we got to grow the hell up with that. I mean, if, if you really think thanking somebody and demonstrating proper manners puts you in a weaker position, man, I think you need to uh, have a little soul search in time. Go get a drink or something and think that one through because uh, uh, far be it for me to tell you, you're wrong, but I'm going to tell you on this one, you're wrong. And you got to grow up and you got to lose that ego BS that, that, that you're experiencing. And you need to start thanking people. A little humility goes a long, long way. Now, how about a helpful assistant? And this could be someone that helped you with, with a client that you already have, maybe gets you on their schedule, maybe has helped you through something in their absence. It could also be, and I think this, this the second part of this is where many people miss an opportunity. Many times we call these people, the assistant, the gatekeeper, because they kind of stop us at the gate and they don't let us in. If you get an assistant, right, and probably first of all, we should stop calling them gatekeepers. That, that might be our first mistake, by the way. But uh, when, we, when we have these helpful assistants, 
that again they were helpful they they talked us through something they gave us some information maybe that we know that they they are truly going to pass something along or whatever how about thanking them and here's uh here's why aside from it just being like the proper thing to do i can tell you that counting your thank you they 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 will have received exactly one in their lifetime because nobody thanks these people they're too busy calling them gatekeepers so that's something you might want to think about i think also we miss an opportunity to thank our clients not just for the order and by the way if you're not thanking them for their orders and for their business and all that uh i think you're missing uh an opportunity um and just just a quick side note i mean a lot of my billing that I do with my coaching practice and all, um, I, I put a little note in there where I call my contact by name, right? Not somebody else's name. That'd just be kind of weird. Calling Nancy John and John Nancy. Man, John might kick your ass for calling him Nancy. You don't know, man. He might be sensitive to that type of thing. Another John might dig it. I don't know. But seriously, I'll put a little line in there where I call them by name and I thank them for their business and um, you know maybe I'll put something in there um, even acknowledging how long, I mean I have clients that go all the way back to, to 2011 when I first started Castane Training Systems I'll say thank you for being my client since 2011 and I try to just break it up each month and try to change it up a little bit and do a different message it helps with my creativity by the way just being able to change up that and expressing that gratitude but really th the other point that I wanted to make is just consider when it comes to your clients thanking them not just for an order it's e it's easier certainly to thank someone after they just uh, gave you a check thank them just because thank thank them for being your client in general uh, you could probably go a step further with that theory and I've talked about this one too surprise them I mean thanking people and surprising them I mean think about relationships relationships need that it needs gratitude it needs appreciation and it needs surprises things to keep it kind of interesting which uh, kind of a, a, a just a a side subject altogether hey don't forget about the people who work behind the scenes uh, in um, in your company to help you look like a, a rock star, the production people, uh, maybe your customer service person, and so on and so forth. Person I've mentioned many, many times uh, in uh, both my blog and on this podcast is a gentleman by the name of Fant Smith, and he was famous when he worked for a company um, called Courier Printing a few years ago. Just kind of randomly giving out Starbucks, you know, five, ten dollar gift cards to people who are helping him behind the scenes. And I think it's very, very important that we remember these people. Plus, I also think it's pretty a, a smart business move. Uh, sometimes uh, these folks have choices, and it might come down to you and someone else. And if you're the one showing appreciation, you're the one who's always kind of taking care of them. Uh, I think I, I really believe in in the fact that they're going to want to take care of you back. So I want you to think about that. Plus, it's just, it's really the right thing to do. Sometimes we forget about all those who make us look like rock stars. So I want you to think about that one a little bit. I think that could be very, very important. And if ever you want a good creativity exercise, just kind of brainstorm with your team. Hey, in what ways can we start thanking clients and prospects more uh, creatively? So think about that. Hey, one more thing while we're on the subject of thank you. Uh, it's real easy to thank people who are your clients. It's real easy uh, to thank people while they're still a prospect. But don't forget to forget. Uh, don't forget to forget. Don't forget to thank the people who told you no. I mean, it's good sportsmanship, right? I mean, it's it's real easy to thank those who just threw a check your way, but somebody who told you no and maybe went with your competitor, I think what it does, it just helps keep the door open, and it's your way of saying to your, your former prospect that, hey, I'm not going to let this get weird. Uh, and when, when you get that tone, when you set the tone of something not getting weird, they'll continue to take your call in the future, and you could stay in the game. You can circle back at another point, and then that no really became more of a not now. So I want you to think about that. Let's move on to the next thing. The next thing, boy, I'll tell you, it's just a real pet peeve of mine. And I think when, when we talk about obvious things that we fail to do, scheduling your hunting time. 
where we actually schedule the hunting time. What happens so many times in sales is that hunting is the activity we do after we've done everything else including administrative stuff and internal meetings and stuff and things that when you really look at them they're not really what you would call money activities my definition of money activities I have three I call it the three gold rocks by the way and they are hunting for business taking care of that business and creating wow moments and, and providing superior customer service and of course growing the business and kind of introducing new products and services or uh, maybe targeting another location of that business that's buying from you right now those are the three things we should be focusing on but uh, when it comes to like going after new business we we're not very very good at actually getting it on the schedule we we talk more if you listen to most salespeople it's like yeah i really need i really need to get some time aside for that or i'm going to try this week or whatever but very non committal and i think we need to treat it like an appointment that you would set with a client or a potential client and i always talk about the phrase that you all should embrace and the phrase is this respect yourself and what I mean by that if you set an appointment with a prospect or a client you would not just just for the heck of it cancel it you wouldn't and and there's a lot of reasons why uh, one I would think it's a little unprofessional right and it, it's very disrespect it's highly disrespectful to just cancel an appointment just for the hell of it but here's where the whole like it just gets weird when you think about it we're willing to give up all this respect for other people for strangers in many cases and keep that appointment but how about the one that we make to ourselves and that's not right I mean we have to respect ourselves we deserve at least the same amount of respect that we're giving everyone else I think it needs to work that way sorry if that's uh, against the grain there but you gotta do it so my suggestion there is schedule the hunting time it's got to go on the calendar and once it's on there you don't let other things break it unless the building is burning down and when I say like you don't let anything get in the way of it I mean I'm even a nut about this stuff when I teach time management I tell everyone that I'm working with and by the way this isn't just breaking your appointment these are things that are gonna pull you away from the, the appointment like like how about like emails checking emails when you're making outbound calls don't do it why because I'm gonna tell you something about your brain I'm gonna tell you something about you right you ready you wanna talk about obvious things that you wanna say duh to wait to hear this one you would much rather do that email than get your ass kicked on the phone right but most people aren't conscious of that fact because the brain is geared in this whole fight or flight thing to move you away from things you ready for this This is what makes me a rocket scientist move you away from things that are painful and many times it just takes over in a subconscious unconscious type of way and you don't even realize it because it's just wired to do that so you're gonna wanna hang out more in the email and even inbound calls co-workers how about pop-ups for those of you who are on uh, either social networking or certainly with like pop-ups from like Outlook or Gmail and things like that so I, I just want to tell you that when you set these appointments with yourself to do the hunting you have to respect yourself no interruptions don't allow anything to break that appointment unless it is a true emergency final point these emergencies are going to happen it's just it's just depending on your business it's gonna happen but first of all I'm here to tell you man it, it probably doesn't happen as much as you'd like to justify and say it happens so that might be your ego kicking in because you're really scared of, of possibly God forbid getting your ass kicked somebody doesn't like want to buy from you boohoo right so that that could be happening right there um, but I'm also here to tell you that occasionally there is going to be a real genuine emergency where you're gonna to have to kind of break that appointment and in those cases well then we have to be adults about it and we have to be grown-ups and we need to just reschedule that activity but we got to get in the bank we can't just let it well I got a good reason it went away well okay yes you do but now where are you gonna make up for that because you need to make up for that. if you want to move ahead you are going to get that back on the schedule somehow enough about that one too next and, and I'm in no particular order here folks we might as well just call these 10 random thoughts but let's go to uh, item number five 
asking good questions. I think uh, when we talk about obvious things that we fail to do, asking good questions. Now, there's a lot of ways we could define asking good questions, but let me just um, throw some things in there that might shake it up a little bit. One aspect of asking a good question is not being just so preoccupied with finding the quote unquote pain. I believe that you are doing everyone a disservice if you're only going for pain. Now, I want to be very, very clear. When it comes to a choice, I mean, you know, this is probably getting into a lot more Tony Robbins stuff than I should be doing on Castane's podcast, but I mean, Tony Robbins talks about how we're driven by two forces, and we're driven by pain and pleasure. And in this case, with, with sales, I like to kind of call it pain and opportunity. And yeah, we do a really good job of trying to stir up the pain. And when you weigh out the two driving forces, as Robbins calls them, pain will always be a stronger motivator, by the way. We always will do more to avoid discomfort, avoid pain, think, uh, unpleasant things, than we will just trying to do something that's going to make us better when we're nice and comfy. But the problem is, when we're nice and comfy and our questions are designed around digging up pain, you get a whole lot of nothing. And when you get a whole lot of nothing, you leave there empty-handed. So you need to look at your questions and make sure you have questions in there that are also designed to talk about things that are not necessarily painful, but things that represent opportunity for their business. So I want you to think about that. That might be a nice little homework assignment for you, if, if I might be so bold. You might want to think about that. But also, there's a few other things here. Part of asking good questions is having the balls to ask the tough questions. I mean, seriously, we've got to ask not just the warm, fuzzy stuff, not just the safe questions. I mean the questions that might, in fact, piss somebody off. Not, you know, like, I mean, I, I, not so intrusive that you're really jumping into their personal life, but I mean, questions like being willing to follow through with, 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 with those follow-up questions that might represent a little bit of tough love. I mean, I've asked people when I've met with um, vice presidents of sales, and we're talking about how um, their team hasn't been performing in, in some cases years. And, you know, I'll ask them sometimes. I mean, not that this is like my, my, my primo question that I'm giving you as an example. And I'll ask them, well, why do you think that is? And, and something like that, which I wouldn't even put under the category of like really ballsy, but I, I, I might say it's a little forward. I, I can't tell you just with that silly question right there, how many VPs of sales have said to me, nobody's ever asked me that. And some of them are stuttering because they don't know how to answer it. Well, I'm not here to be your friend. I'm not here for the warm fuzzies. I mean, if we can get that as kind of a you know a value added part of the relationship, rock on. But I'm here to kind of ask those questions that nobody else quite has the balls to ask. So that's part of what you need to be doing right there. And here's the final aspect, um, uh, really under the heading of obvious things that you might be missing. This one might it's obvious, but it might not be so obvious for you. Many times we reserve the questions for the prospects. And once they become a customer, we fail to continue to do a good, thorough needs analysis. That, to me, if I were to give you just a great analogy for you to think about, it would be like going to the doctor when you're an infant and never having a checkup again. And that's what we're doing with our prospects. And it just puts you in such an awful position because you have to know that as good as you are, they do from time to time take a point, you know, take meetings with your competitors. And if the competitors are asking questions that you're not, they now have the most up-to-date information, the most relevant information. Why should that be? To me, that's just, that's inexcusable. They should never have more information than you. You have the inside track. You have the relationship. You have to own that relationship. So I think you have to be willing. And plus, by the way, things change in businesses. Businesses, business today moves at the speed of light. In the 29 minutes that we've been together on this podcast, something has changed somewhere with somebody's client. I guarantee you, it's just the way it is. So we need to continue to do that. You want an action item, I'm going to throw one at you right now, man. I'm going to 
give you guys so many damn assignments this week, you're going to keep you out of trouble to the beginning of the new year there. But I want you to, to consider doing this. Think about your clients right now. Think about the last time that you've done a good, thorough needs analysis. And you know what? If you, if you haven't done one in a while, I don't want you to feel bad about it. I want you to get off your ass and do something about it. So what you need to do is you should, and you should be having regular checkups with your clients where like once a quarter perhaps, I mean I do this with all of my coaching clients, once a quarter we do something that I, um, I have uh, a process that I call the sales x-ray. We do a sales x-ray. Why? Because something has changed with them and how they're they're attacking their business. They have new challenges. They have new opportunities. And we need to know what they are so that we can continue to work together at the highest level possible. But that's not restricted to coaching. That should be you and your clients as well. So I want you to think about that as well. Let's move on to item number six. You know, you, you, one of the things that might be very obvious to you, but you might not be uh, following through on it, is having a good, solid keep in touch campaign, a good communication map, as we've been talking a lot on this, on this podcast lately. You know, I think the problem is when it comes to prospecting, there's a lot of problems. I mean, number one, I think we do it only when, like, all the other things have been done, so we don't do it as often as we should and, and we hurt because of that not just because of missed opportunity but because we're making it more difficult on ourselves with the prospects because because we're not keeping in touch regularly what happens is we have to then every time we reach out to him again it's like kind of like going through that Paul who casting training systems who yourselves playbook.com who I don't want that I mean I want people to know who I am which is why I do all this crazy stuff like podcasts and all that other stuff but you have to do this these things regularly including picking up a phone and calling them and trying to set up an appointment so we need to do all of these things so my first bit of advice to you is again you've heard me say this millions of times I, don't just rely on the phone, please. We, we've got to move beyond that. I think that there's so much more beyond phone calls that we could be utilizing as sales professionals. I mean, this isn't like 1960 here, gang. Uh, there's lots of new technology that we can be using, and that's not an excuse for us to then go and abandon phone calls and just hang out on LinkedIn or abandon LinkedIn and then just go and do some other form of technology. What I'm here to tell you is that all of these things, phone calls, LinkedIn, um, even referrals like we talked about earlier, creative approaches, all of these things on their own are quite lonely in, in that they need the companionship of other things. Plus, it keeps it very interesting to your prospects. And it's not just, oh, here we go again, the same damn call, same damn day of the week. It changes it up. It makes you less predictable. For selfish reasons, it just makes it better for you because it keeps it interesting. You are not wired as a sales professional to do one thing all the time. You need to understand that about yourself. You're wired to do lots of things and just kind of mix up your day. Those are the best days for you. If you look back on your best days, unless you're that rare upset, you know, exception, Usually, it's going to be a day that's just filled with many different activities. So you want to you you want to do those things for all of the above reasons. But what I want you to do is really a few things. Another assignment to keep you out of trouble. I want you to think about everything that you could have in your arsenal, and everything from phone calls, email, snail mail, and within each category that you come up with, think about little sub ideas underneath it. So like, let's just say we talk about snail mail. Well. Through snail mail, you could have just a real straight up introductory letter, right? You could use cards. You could do something creative. Um, kind of under the snail mail thing, I would say FedExing something. You could also do drop ins if that's appropriate. If geographically, you could stop by and drop something off in the process. Um, you can combine things on the list, right? So that's what you need to do. Think about this arsenal. Just think about this complete arsenal of things that you can do. Then what you need to do after that is kind of map the communication and choose a weapon. So, and, and the way we map the communication is through a series of kind of like if-then statements. So maybe the first touch that I'm going to do is going to be, and again, I'm just giving you just a hypothetical uh, thing here, to a hypothetical map to follow. Maybe my first touch is going to be 
intro call number one. Now, I have to bank on the fact, which most people don't, by the way, that they're either not going to take my call, I'm going to get stuck at the gate, or I'm going to go into voicemail heaven, right? So what am I going to do then? So now, if I don't make the connection, then what I'm going to do is maybe leave voicemail number one. Well, if I don't hear back from them, and so many people seem so shocked that people like, imagine that, we live in a world where people just have other things to do, then call back someone, you ready for this, who is trying to sell them something. So yeah, I mean, how dare they not call us back, but we act so shocked anyway. But what are you going to do then? So okay, maybe we go to the next item on the map. Maybe that's going to be intro email number one or intro snail mail number one or intro FedEx intro whatever right who knows but you need to map it out like that and just have time frames on it but when you map things out ahead of time you don't have to map out a year of communication you could map out the next 90 days you can map out the next 60 or 30 to 60 what happens then is it keeps you fresh exciting and interesting and you will no longer be calling you ready for this to check in because that sucks I mean there's no value in that message so you might want to think about that you should have maps for clients you should have maps for prospects but again failing to put in a good consistent keep in touch campaign because this is going to come as a shock to you but your prospect as well as you we, we now have limited attention spans Right? I know, I know this is like cutting edge stuff I'm giving you on this podcast. You've never heard that one before. But again, this is obvious stuff that you might have heard, but you might have dismissed perhaps because of its simplicity or because you've heard it 10,000 times. That's part of it. Right there. You have to keep in touch. You don't want to have to go through that whole thing of Paul who, Frank who, whatever, every time you're reaching out to them. So we want to do that. Very, very important. Next. Um, this one's a little warm and fuzzy, but what the hell, man? It's my podcast, my rules. I think it's really important when it comes to obvious things that we might not be doing, that we might fail to do, positive attitude. I think uh, many of us, we buy into that, but sometimes we could be the most negative people on the planet. And uh, many times we're sitting there commiserating with other uh, salespeople and sometimes we're in a bad mood and that's not enough we need some company so we need to trash their day too and I think that is something that we need to be uh, conscious of I think very very important but also too just just more importantly I think it's very important that you intentionally start your day on the right note and this is a lesson that I learned the hard way for many many years uh, and I haven't talked about this in a while but uh, back in the day I used to kind of start the day off by just watching the news. And then I realized, man, just how negative the news is. And when you think about it, they get paid on that negativity. They get paid on just all kinds of disaster and everything else because it sells. It sells. People get glued to their set. You don't get paid on that, by the way. So you need to think about that and how that can foul your mood. And to me, I look at it like this. We have body armor as sales professionals. Why in the hell would you start your day by being stripped of your body armor by just just indulging in negativity? So as far as the news goes, I mean, we can't live in a bubble. <clears throat> we have to keep apprised of all the things that are going on in the world. So the way I choose to take my news is just right on the homepage, right? Right on Yahoo or whatever. I could just go on there and I could scan and I could I could deal with the news on my terms instead of, I mean, think about the news. I mean, seriously, within a five-minute period, you're going to hear about seven people who've been murdered, about one company, you know, one country that's pissed off at another country, might be marching in to kick somebody's ass. And we can go on and on and on about how this thing is on the verge of bankruptcy and about this thing with the president and about this thing with the Republicans and the Democrats. And we can go on and on and on. And I'm just getting pissed off just even thinking about it. That's how bad it is. So you might want to think about um, how you start your day. Something else about how you start your day that I started doing a few years ago. And, you know, what I'm about to tell you is, is over the top, warm and fuzzy. I'm going to warn you. But I also want to tell you something else that I told you, and this is just really cool. Do you know that here in the United States, the IRS does not allow a deduction for warm and fuzzy? They still count it as revenue. So if you bring in business, because what I'm about to tell you, because it was warm and fuzzy, the IRS will not tell you, I'm sorry, that is just way too wimpy. 
too wimpy there. I mean, come on, dude. You know, not man enough. That's just too wimpy what you did. Well, you know, they, they're going to tax you on it. It counts. So who gives a damn what you got to do to get yourself in that zone so long as it's between ethical and legal, right? You got to keep that in mind. But what I want to say is, is that one of the things I do when I uh, immediately, when I wake up, I go through kind of a gratitude checklist and I just kind of uh, I start by saying thank you just kind of a general thank you and that thank you by the way could be just directed in general if you're not a spiritual person there could be a spiritual attachment to it you could certainly thank your creator for another day uh, being alive because just kind of waking up dead is a bitch I can't imagine that being a good thing right so you might want to think about that but then I go through what I am particularly grateful for and I kind of make it 30 seconds or less and you know, there, there's just regular things that I, I just want to make sure that I'm thanking someone for. And just the act of hearing myself say thank you and just kind of going through this, it puts me, when you think about things you're grateful for, it puts you in a much better mood. And we're not saying you have to spend a half an hour here, the first minute of your day. And um, I just think it's a good thing. And I remember hearing something uh, a while ago, and I had, I had done a blog post on this Um as your two feet hit the ground from the bed, right, when those two feet hit the floor, um, start by saying thank you. And I think it would really change the way uh, you, you think about things. Uh, last but not least on this positive attitude thing, you got to be ready to identify your – just kind of be able to flag those moments when you become particularly negative throughout the day. I really believe – that many of us we run kind of like a pattern certain things happen we go into this kind of pissy mode and we start getting very very negative maybe maybe it gets triggered when somebody's kind of jerking you around when they were supposed to come through with the order and they haven't maybe when they go MIA on you and they're not getting back to you whatever it is and then you start reacting a certain way and then you start next thing you know people are saying hello to you wrong and you come home and you kick the dog you know you know the deal so you have to know what you look like in those moments and what you sound like what triggers it and and interrupt that pattern so when when these things happen you have something else that immediately takes your mind off it and one of the best ways to do that is to ask yourself a question about something maybe that excites you like well what am I really excited about okay that that particular thing sucks but what are some really cool things that are going on right now what are some opportunities that I am very very happy about right now that are not frustrating me and uh, if you can't answer that question then maybe you need then to stop complaining and go and cancel everything else out and get your ass back on the phone and make some opportunities maybe maybe that's the real problem right there but um, and other people on your team if you have people that just love to be negative and maybe you're one of them you need to have kind of a heart-to-heart with some people and uh, what I recommend that you do is again when something's awkward you own the awkwardness and nobody's gonna get mad at you for that and use a little bit of humor and maybe tell them say listen I promise myself I'm gonna turn over a new leaf and I can tend to be kind of negative from time to time and if you don't mind if we're having a conversation and I feel it's going down a negative road I'm gonna cut it short from now on because we, we just don't get paid on negativity here and I certainly don't want my negativity to bring you down and please don't take this the wrong way I certainly don't want your negativity bringing me down so maybe we can get a little agreement going that we're gonna kinda of keep each other in line with that because I'd certainly appreciate it from you and uh, that's what I would do but uh, you, you don't want to engage in that because certainly you don't feel like going out and tearing bumpers off of cars after you just talked about everything that's uh, annoying you um, the next one uh, is a huge one and I just feel really funny saying it but I think sometimes we uh, an obvious thing is just we, we fail to think and many times again when I first take on a coaching client and we're talking about time management because that's one of the the first things we talk about because I could teach you lots of cool things but if you have the time to do it I mean what good is it right so we have to talk about how we can liberate enough time in your day to do these new things I'm telling you to do and many times people will tell me you know what Paul it's just I don't even have time to think and uh, my response is perhaps that's the problem um, and again, I don't say to some pompous, I know it all type of dude. I say it as a guy who uh, maybe in some cases might know a little bit more than you do, but I don't know them, know a little bit more than you do in some areas for the right reasons. I, I know it because I've fallen and I've made some really bad mistakes along the line. So um, 
I think, but our problem, right, I really do believe that our, our problem is that we're not taking the time to think. We're always in response mode. We're always in reaction mode. We're always saying how busy we are. And if we could just take that time to just quiet the mind a little bit, and we can kind of, I, I look at it almost like a conveyor belt with all these thoughts. And you've heard me say this before, depending on who you want to believe, there's 60 to 90,000 thoughts each day running through your mind. So it's on this conveyor belt, and it becomes almost like that scene, I Love Lucy, and what was it, the, the chocolate factory, right? All these things start going over the side, trying to stuff them in our mouth and a shirt. And they just start piling all over the place. We just don't, we have to slow down that conveyor belt and corral those thoughts and start thinking a little bit more about our life and thinking about the things that are scaring us, the things that we're avoiding. We need to be thinking about the things that we want to do and think about where we are versus where we had hoped to be at this point of our life. Not to make it a negative thing and sit there and cry in our journal, but to now just face reality and say, well, what am I going to do? Do to change that um, because I can tell you not thinking about it is not helping you can't sweep stuff under the carpet like that you got to deal with it and again that's spoken to you uh, that that's given to you from someone who didn't deal for a long time. So I want you to take that one for what it's worth as well. But uh, very important to be thinking about your business and how you could do things better, thinking about clients, thinking about those upcoming appointments and look at them rather kind of like um, – uh, suspiciously. In other words, like, you know, there, there's, I'm missing something here. What is it? What am I missing? I mean, there's got to be something else I should be thinking about or doing in preparation for this meeting. Things like that are very, very important, but you, you really have to start dedicating more time to think. And I will promise you that if you can make it a daily habit, it's like going to the gym and working out when you first go certain muscles are weak and then you start going and you're working the muscle more and more and more and you're going to get better now you're exercising your thinking muscles which is going to help you with creative ideas for clients and to get in the door with prospects and so on and so forth really important that you do that let's move on to item number nine uh, this is a really tough one for salespeople you know you should be doing this but your ego will stop you almost every time ask someone how they they did something ask someone how they got a result if you work with someone and they broke into a particular vertical ask them how did you do it if you work with someone or know of someone who who just month after month just kicks butt ask them how they're kicking butt if you know someone who just went through a tough negotiation and they came out on top ask them how they did it but we should be modeling other people but the thing that keeps us from doing this more often than not is our ego it's kind of protecting us from being vulnerable start becoming more vulnerable uh, that might be something that you might want to put on your list of things that you need to embrace become more vulnerable um, and ask people for help ask people how they did something and it would just blow your mind how many people including complete strangers are willing to share something with you but again you know just you want to do it like you want to be careful with it because you don't want to just be a complete taker hopefully you're a giver also but you, you, you certainly can ask people how they were able to achieve a result or how they do something model successful people and then that brings us to the final thing and this right here um, we could do a whole podcast on this and one of the obvious things that we've heard a million gazillion trillion zillion billion whatever times we fail to execute. We, we have lots of ideas. We have lots of hopes and dreams. And especially this time of year, you're coming into the time of year where many people are going to set New Year's resolutions and set goals and things like that. And we just we just fail to execute. And as Seth Godin would say, we, we, you know, we have to ship. We have to ship it. And a lot of us are just not too good at that. So one, I mean, like I said, there's a lot we can talk about here. But one thing from now is, again, I'm going back into my coaching practice here. One kind of Paulism, and that's just something that, like Paul says over and over and over again to the point of exhaustion, is that you don't, we're not serious about something until we get it on a calendar just like we talked about with that prospecting before you're not serious about something until it gets on the calendar and scheduled like you would an appointment and then you keep it so if you have things that you want to do if you have ideas you want to try do me a favor right now 
read off every one of those things to yourself or you know just nice and silently and say amen after every one of them because right now what you're looking at are several prayers you're not serious about it until it gets a date attached to it yeah it kind of sounds like that whole smart goal uh, setting thing or whatever it is but whatever the hell you want to call it it really doesn't matter right but what's really important is that you do it and uh, one of the things I say in just about every webinar that I do certainly in the sales school program at the end of every session I tell people to flag just one thing that they're going to do and take a moment right there while I'm on the phone with them to just schedule it on the smartphone because it's you're not serious about it until you do it so maybe that's one of the things you might want to start doing today work those muscles today I'm hoping that there was at least one good gold nugget here that you're gonna leave with and you might say that makes sense I could I see the value in what Paul's saying if that's the case you need to pause this you need to pull out that smartphone because it's not just for little angry bird games and and texting and, and snapchat and all that kind of fun stuff it's also like free ass kicking right there for you free ass kicking like we shouldn't charge for ass kicking anyway but this is free you schedule it Get on the calendar and make sure you do it. So there you have it, folks. We have 10 obvious things that we, we failed to do. And I'm thinking about making this a regular segment because, I, I mean, I was really just having a hard time limiting it uh, to 10. I mean, there's a lot more things I want to make sure we're doing. It'll be a nice little checklist for us to kind of... Uh, you know, to, ha to embrace from time to time. So we'll make sure that we do it. But you have 10 things there. Again, I'm going to encourage you to just pick one thing in there and embrace it so that you could start taking some action. It's not going to hurt. And before you go, just want to make sure that I remind you that uh, we have, and it may seem like a long ways off, but we have uh, the upcoming sessions of our online sales school program. And it's going to be starting up in January, toward the end of January. So yes, you still have some time to do it, but it's like anything else. Sometimes we fail to execute. So if it's something that you're serious about, I would highly recommend that you circle back to the show notes today. And uh, you can get to the show notes by going to yoursalesplaybook.com slash 95 because this is episode 95. I'll have all the juicy details there. Might be a really cool way for you to begin the new year strong. Now, if you would like to know about discounts for two or more people, so sales managers, VPs of sales, business owners, this might be a really cool way to get the whole team beginning the year with lots and lots of, of great ideas. In fact, there's over a hundred tips that I talk about easy to use, easy to implement uh, tips, sales tips that you can do to just bring the sales up a notch or three, you're going to want to email me for uh, the discounted rates, paul at yoursalesplaybook.com. One more time, paul at yoursalesplaybook.com. With that, I am Paul Castain from yoursalesplaybook.com. I am wishing you an incredible week ahead. Go get them. The Sales Playbook Podcast is a casting training systems production.